Hello and welcome back to Discrete Math. This is lesson 14. We're going to be going over some combinatorics examples. So the first one we're going to do is uh, computing the number of ways, the number of possible uh, Powerball tickets. So the way the Powerball works is you choose five numbers from 1 through 69, and then we choose one number from 1 to 26, and if we get all those correct, we win. It's a big jackpot. So we're going to compute the number of ways that could happen. So uh, we first compute 69 choose 5, and that is uh, around 11 million. And then we compute 21 choose 6, which is just 26. And then we can multiply those two numbers together, and we'll get around 229 million possible tickets. So not very good odds for you to get one of those. Next will be um, poker hands. We're going to compute uh, a number of different poker hands. So first we're going to compute the total number of poker hands. And the way poker works is you choose five cards from a deck of 52. So that's simply 52 choose five, and that's around um, 2.6 million. So next we can um, compute the number of possible ways to get a pair, for instance, and we first choose our the rank of the pair. That's going to be like two, three, or jack, or queen, etc. There's 13 possible options there. We choose one, and then we choose um, a suit for our pair, and uh, keep in mind that the pair is going to that each card in the pair is going to have a different suit. So we choose two of those from four, and by suit I mean uh, like diamonds, spades, clubs, etc., or hearts. Um, next, we choose the remaining cards, so that'll be twelve, choose three, and then we're going to choose a suit for each one of those. So there's four possible options to choose from, and then we have one suit per card. And then we repeat that three times, and that'll get us around a million. Likewise, we do the same computation with the two pair. We first choose the rank of our first pair, and then we choose a suit. Then we choose uh, suits for each one of those cards, and then we choose the rank of our second pair, and then we choose a suit for each one of those cards, and then we choose uh, one more rank for the remaining card out of eleven. And keep in mind that this number decreases each time because we've already used. Uh, a rank in the previous pair, right? And then we choose a rank here, and that gets us around 123,000. So next is going to be a three of a kind. We first choose a rank for our uh, three cards, and then we choose a suit for each one of those. And then we can choose a rank for the remaining two cards. Notice that they have to be different. And then we choose a suit for each one of those. Because there's two cards, we square this quantity here, and that gets us around 55,000. So next is going to be a full house. We choose the rank of our three of a kind. Then we're going to choose suits for our three of a kind. And then we're going to choose a rank for our pair. Notice that there, that uh, one rank has already been used. And then we're going to choose suits for each one of those uh, cards in our pair. And that'll give us around 3,700. So this is just a quick review of probability. The probability of an event occurring is going to be the number of ways an event can occur versus the number of ways all events can occur. So a simple example would be flipping two coins. Let A represent the event that both coins land on tails. We're going to go ahead and compute the probability of that. So we're going to first list off all the possible ways um, coin flips can happen. So we have tails, 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 heads, heads, tails, and heads, heads. And we're going to put all of these in our set S, which is going to represent our sample space. And if we compute the cardinality of S, we can see that it's simply 4. So that's the number of ways all of the events can occur. So uh, notice that only one option from the sample space is both tails. That's the tail tails that I just boxed off there. So that means the probability of both coins ending on tails is going to be 1 over 4. So uh, another example, using the values we computed previously, we can find the probability of getting a pair in poker. So we're going to let um, the cardinality of S be the number of poker hands possible, and we computed that to be 52 choose 5. Uh, next, we're going to compute the number of ways we can get a pair, and that's this quantity right here. So the probability of getting a pair is going to be the number of ways we can get a pair over the number of possible poker hands, and once we uh, crunch the numbers, we'll see that it comes out to around 42%. So another example is going to be the birthday problem, and that's simply uh, computing what are the odds that two people out of n 
have the same birthday. So now notice that the probability of two people sharing the same birthday is the complement of uh, the probability that no two people share the same birthday, right? Because those are opposite events. So uh, one way we can compute this, this quantity on the right here, is we can uh, first assign uh, a day for person one, and they could have uh, any of the days out of the year, 365 out of 365 possible. Person two, on the other hand, has one option to avoid. That's the day that person one chose. So that leaves him with 364 days to choose from. Then person three has two options to avoid, right? Whatever person one has and whatever person two has. So that leaves them with 363. And we can repeat this uh, several times. And we notice that we'll get a pattern uh, as seen in the numerator here. We'll have 365 times 364 uh, all the way down to 365 minus n plus one. And that's all gonna be divided by 365 uh, to the n power. And that's just from the right hand side here. And we'll simply notice that this uh, numerator here can be expressed as a permutation. So we can simplify this down into one minus the permutation of 365 and n divided by 365 to the n. And after we plug in different values of n to this formula, we can see that, that um, there's a 50% chance of a match uh, with 23 people. which is a little bit unintuitive. So next we're gonna move on to the general birthday problem. Now instead of uh, 365, we're going to uh, have K just be an arbitrary variable. So before this was days, but now we're just gonna make it K possible values and we're going to take it out of a group of size N. Remember this was N people from the previous example. So now what are the odds that there's a match? And we're gonna quickly uh, find a formula to uh, quickly estimate this probability because permutations and uh, whatnot uh, and uh, factorials can blow up very quickly. The numbers can get very large. Uh, sometimes it'll overflow the calculator or the computer. So we need to find a quick way to estimate this probability. So we're going to go ahead and use what we know from the previous slides that um, our probability here uh, can be represented as uh, k over k times k minus one over k. Remember this was like 365 over 365, 364 out of 365, etc. And we'll notice that that can be rewritten if we simply uh, divide through the k to um, this right here. We'll have one minus zero over k times one minus one over k times one minus n minus one over k. And we can recall um, that e to the x is approximately um, one plus x by using a Taylor expansion. So that means the probability can be expressed as follows. Uh, e to the minus one over k times um, minus two over k, etc., all the way down to the e to the um, minus n minus one over k. And remember that if we multiply exponentials, we can add the exponents if they have the same base. So that leaves us um, with this expression here. And notice that we can uh, express this summation here as a product using our triangle sum that we've covered earlier. So um, that can reduce into n times n minus one over two k. And that is approximately um, e to the minus n squared over two k. So this is our quick formula, and notice that it's a little similar to what you might remember from like a probability class as like a uh, exponential distribution, just a little bit. Has this, uh, a very similar form to the exponential CDF. So that's all, thanks for watching.